Guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back, Cotter. That was a great show. It was a good Produced show. by a friend, Alan Sachs. Right? Really? That's right, yes. Alan Sachs. Interesting. Yeah, Which crazy. He created, where yeah. he created Welcome Back. Long before our time, but uh, but a great show. Alan Sachs also did a little movie called The Other Me. That's where... You and he played dual characters in that one. Fantastic. I'm shedding. Look at this. Yeah. I like your Don't hat, put Jeff. it on me. Oh, thanks, dude. Look at that hat. This is from my little uh, company. Thank you. This oh, you is, made that hat. I made this hat. I yeah. can tell it has your your your. Uh, this is uh this is a little charred. This is a little charred uh, charred city signature knickknacks. It's on a little there. charred city. It's gonna be my new little hat line. These are custom and we burn them and then uh, we we design these custom patches and do a little tie on the back and a little thing and they're all customizable. We're gonna be launching later this year and um, cool. so cool. I'm very uh, I'm very excited about this. So uh, I will give them to you guys and when I give you guys your hats, I got a. Really cool, like a uh, dog one for you cool. coming. It's really, really dope. And I got, I got a cool, like, um, mu musician, like, firearm thing for you, which is really neat. Fire ant? Not a fire ant. No, firearm. Ant? Firearm. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. So, but yeah, we people, should, the response been pretty fire neat. Fire crotch for him. Fire crotch. Yeah. That's what I'll do. Yeah, these are. Uh, I'm excited about this little venture. So, I'll let you guys know as it goes cool, on. But um, yeah, as tell me, tell me, tell day. me what you think of the of the name Charred City. Because these are all burned. They're actually burned with like a burner and they're set of flame. And then they, the aftermath is what these hats are. And they're all custom and they're all, and they're all different. I just feel like this is like a little. Just Leave it alone. Little long on that side. Not long. Might need to oh, be, I see what it's Andy's like sticking saying. out here. So if you cut it. No, you're not supposed to cut it. It's supposed no, to be there. It's... I would do it, Joe, is put it further back around. You know what? I have a little. So that it hangs. I have, like... I have a lighter. Okay, listen. This, 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 this company doesn't have a board. I have a lighter. This doesn't have a board of directors. Let's, let's try to burden some. Get the hell out of here, you idiot. Cuts to like a, an insert shot of around Joe's back. And you come up. Oh my God. Oh God. You, light him on fire. Ah, no, you don't cuts, light it when it cuts, it's on there. That's one of those old no, fire you're just, dummies. You're sitting there and you're like. No, I, I'd yeah. say it's cuts, hot in here, guys. I wanted to cut to one of those old fire dummies that you like. Oh, those yeah, people, yeah, like yeah, the fire yeah, burns. You oh, like those people yeah. on fire yeah, yeah, and they just they yeah. look really ridiculous. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Uh, that's so funny. Uh, like the old, what was it? I guess it was. The weird J thing is Jason, you can tell. Freddy Krueger. That they're in yeah. those weird falling suits. Down the, falling down the stairs. And yeah, it was like this, one of those. Yeah. It's clearly not the person in there. And yeah, it's weird. suit. I know. And then they do it in slow-mo and you're like, I can see the stunt man. I know. In a fire retardant suit. Early 80s filmmaking. My goodness. Some of some of it was pretty was pretty dope, but some of it was pretty not so dope. Yeah, that was eloquently put, wasn't it? Yeah, that would be my official review. Some of it was dope, dope. some of it was not so dope. Not so dope. Yeah, <laughs> dope, not so dope. <laughs> <laughs> like do the thumbs up, do the thumbs down. <laughs> Ebert and yeah, we Roper uh, Ebert and Siskel, the old right. Ebert and Siskel. Then it became Ebert and Roper. Because Siskel passed away. Yeah, because Siskel passed away. Yep. Do you remember when that was like kind of two, a big deal? Two thumbs up. If you, you got, got the two, two thumbs, thumbs up, up, you were going. You were going. <laughs> Kids would be like, you were going. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> two thumbs up. We're going. We're going. Two thumbs up, man. You're going to the movies. Oh that yeah. Weekend. It, it, it was. It was what Rotten Tomatoes is today. I mean, yeah, it was you're what, right. You know, you see a 98 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, you're like, oh, it must be pretty good. So you know, sometimes you get duped, but uh, you know, you're like, that wasn't 98 percent. That was eight percent. That thing sucked. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, I don't know what kind of tomatoes these yeah, were. Yeah, I kind of trust. Rotten tomatoes. I kind of trust the thumbs up or thumbs down over tomatoes. Here's the difference. They're actually both kind of, they've got their both. Their Are they Roma stuff. tomatoes? So Rotten Tomatoes is more of a, what is the right word? The, Network. Uh, consensus. Uh, consensus of yeah. the population, uh -huh. whereas two thumbs up were just two guys. But here's where I understand well, they, where it catches up and where it starts to maybe even overtake it is that you don't have the opportunity to listen to the consensus well, they've taken about what they actually thought. Yeah. Right. It's just a rating. Whereas Ebert well, and Siskel you could rely. would take you through for like 45 minutes on the could, bullet points and why. You could why also form, and, formulate your, your, your opinion off of, off of their opinion and you could get, you know, you could trust in some of their critiques, mm -hmm. reviews. For example, if, if Siskel liked one and, you know, you liked the the movies that what is going I can't even focus here because I'm being jerry rigged and positioned I'm and prodded into a better look for the people that are watching this you are partially blocking Matt's camera yes. nobody's gonna like that we have wonderful black magic cameras the best cameras in the entire world we love black magic all of them we do they're tremendous do they have a lens kit they have all things that we would love and need at any point in time to yeah. make fantastic films yes and casts. Which is why we're using them. We don't mess around. We're using black magic for this podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was blocking your shot. And for mm -hmm. the people that are watching this, they're going to see Andy's 
wispy hairs, mm-hmm. and it's gonna look like your beard is very long, just on one side. Long, and nobody's gonna like that. Side. Weirdly like, gray. Weird patch. Yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, yeah. It's a very. What was that guy in that movie with Kurt Russell and the kid? Um, the evil guy. Uh, it was like they were fighting like martial arts. Oh, uh, uh, what was um, this movie? Showdown in Little Tokyo. Big Something trouble. like that. Yeah, big, big trouble. trouble, Little Tokyo. Wasn't there one guy who just had that yeah. weird plume of hair? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what it reminds yeah, me yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. China. <clears throat> so that's big that trouble was that was the little, little China. Yeah, big trouble movie. in Little China. Great yeah. movie. I like that. Yeah, movie. Kim Cattrall. Yes, so from the yes, who went on to the Sex in the City fame. Yeah, yeah, she was fantastic. That's right. And then didn't return. Oh, yeah, they didn't pay. Way to bring that up. Yeah. She didn't want to come back for no. I heard that it. big. I agree. No, I it wasn't a salary. Oh, what was it? No. It was oh, they a, just didn't it was like a feud. it. Feud. Oh, a feud. That's right. A lot of conflict there. A lot of conflict. Conflict on that set. That's what. Uh, yep. That's what we heard. But yep. um, who it are we? Was. Who are we to judge? I wasn't anywhere near Sex in the City. Nope. I mean, I've had Sex in a City, but I wasn't spending a lot of time watching that. That was a little. I actually like. No, Sex I. In I city. actually like the show. I just. I. I for some reason. See, it was I on in like the late nineties, early two thousands. I never got into it. it. No, I was like a Friends guy. Yeah. I was like, you know, um, Frasier and you know, uh, Mad About You, and those are the shows I was. Cheers, watching. that's going way you back. Know, but yeah, Taxi. Whoa, well, my God, Happy Days. Those yeah. are your. Those are my your three sons. Yeah. You know, all yeah, the see, streets of watch, San Francisco. I don't what? watch any of those. Lucy, in the 70s. No, Lucy, <laughs> <laughs> Leave It to Beaver. Have you ever seen that? The original show? Adams Family. <laughs> oh my God, and the Monsters. Monsters. Are you a Monsters or <laughs> Adams Family? That's a poll I want to start. Oh God, if you don't know the mon- wait a minute, people are obsessed with the Monsters, dude. Whatever Rob Zombie just did the a remake of the Monsters, didn't he? I don't know if it was that good. I didn't see it. I don't know what the Rotten Tomatoes was on that. But at any rate, we are you a Monsters fan? Or are you an Adams Family? Wait, isn't fan? a Monsters a, a type of cheese? That's Munster. It's different. These were the Munsters. I mean, it was a idiot. good show too. I gotta be honest with you. The Munsters was badass. It was a good show. Fred Gwynn. You ever see a movie? And and obviously this is for our slightly older fans. But My Cousin Vinny, oh, which was an amazing film. Joe love Pesci, this movie. Marissa Tomei, Fred Gwynn played the judge. The oh, Munsters. remember oh, yeah. the two Utes? Yeah, that what, guy. What did you say? He's so great. I'm you sorry, Your Honor. What I a meant face. the two. You, did you ever see you <laughs> Book of Shadows? No, no. You never saw the show? No. no. Shadows, was he in it? Thousands of them. Was I he saw in it? What We Do in the Shadows. That's a pretty cool. That's a show. What we What we do in the shadows? That's the vampire spoof, isn't there? What you do in the shadows? Book of Shadows, the movie. That was no, made the, the TV show. show on FX. What we do in oh, the shadows. That was, so that mm. they definitely took that from. Book you of didn't shadows. see that. I mean, I've seen it. Oh, it's a spoof, dude! It's so funny. Oh, that's funny. It's about these literally idiot vampires. Mm, they're they're the is. worst yeah. vampires, and they try to they throw parties, and they're like they they try to be sophisticated, but they're fucking idiots. They're the worst. They're terrible vampires. Terrible. And oh, you got to see that. What we do in the shadows. It's been on for like three years. Well, anyway, but the monsters. I actually enjoyed the monsters TV show way better than the Adams Family TV show. But I like the original two Adams Family movies that they made. Yeah, those are good. And this Wednesday thing is killer. Uh, look, it's, so, it's but that's awesome. Tim Burton's killer. Absolutely. Well, he, love he, he directed the original Adams Family. Oh, he did? Tim Burton. Yeah, I'm almost oh. positive that. The movies? Yeah. I don't know about that. I think he. He probably. He, I don't think he did, dude. It seems right, like something well, in his you know, veins. Like, so, right, Jericho. So, yeah, like, it like cosmetically, it, it would fit, but timeline, it doesn't. No, because he was doing 89. He did that. Really? It was oh, after all that, really? and he was. Really? Yeah, I don't think he was doing. Oh, really. my service here is just shit. I'm gonna look it up because I can't take it. Who's your uh, mobile provider? We read. I'm looking for the best one, and then I'll mention them on our show. Okay. Mint, what? Mint. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Oh. Yo, Ryan. I know you, pal. I know you. I was actually gonna do Van Wilder. Yeah, I was gonna do it. And believe it you or know, not, I did a movie with him. I know you did. I was going to do Van Wilder. I got the, uh, I, I mean, there's no harm in saying it because the guy that went on to do it was great. Uh, but I got the role of a dick bag and uh, to play opposite Ryan Reynolds. I was, I was the antagonist and we were doing jumping ship mm. and Disney would not let me out for like a week crossover on that film. So, I that. Uh, and I could say that because it's okay. Cause it isn't like, Oh, I passed on that. No, I wanted to do it. I got it. Yeah. And then, and then they ended up doing, you know, and the guy was great. And it was, funny i don't i don't know the guy that did it but the, i saw the movie because mm. you know my one of my best pals wrote it anyway but you know yeah so do you know who directed the adams family dude what, the first movie who all of them oh, all of the movies who barry sonnenfield oh that's right that's who right that's also right, directed right. get shorty yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, also right. just directed right. disenchanted this guy's awesome yeah oh sonnenfeld did disenchanted wow. he's really good dude he's good he's good he's and men good. in black yeah, yeah oh no no i know i know he did men in black wild wild wet well let's not talk about that one 
That's not the theme song was great. Yep, which yeah, was a remake. But yes. the original was way better. Yeah, but I wish is that the what it's called? I think. But anyway, I prefer the the TV show Monsters. Definitely go check it out on YouTube. It's really cool. I love it. It's great. I loved it. I used, we used to watch Meme and Pop's house. Yeah, it was on in reruns. Like, because yeah. this was in the mid 80s. It was already like 25 year old show. Crazy, uh, right? Yeah, dude. I know. Black, and white. black and white. Yes, it is. The Monsters was black and white. Isn't yeah. that crazy? I'll I'll watch stuff. Like, I'll, I'll catch something that I saw when I was a kid. It yeah. It's like so modern when I was a kid. Oh. And it holds this modern place in my brain. I'm watching it and I'm like, this looks like an old. Dude, Knight Rider. Like an old dude, Knight Rider. Like something bro, Knight Rider. Bro, something. Knight like, Rider, bro. Like, remember we used to old. we used to crush Knight Rider. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of that too, especially because the just the composition of film. Yeah. Versus digital oh, drastically yeah. changed over the but last. But I gotta tell you, there are certain. So you're not gonna. So you're like the movies that were made up and to the switch over, like yeah. the start skiing hutches and stuff like that when they yeah. start to switch over to digital film. Yeah. Are gonna look vintage, especially now because our eyes. Have all adapted, just like Auto Tune has adapted our ears to music. Our eyes have adapted to digital. So now movies on shot on film are going to look extremely vintage. Even if it was made in ninety nine, even if it was like nine months, yeah. you watch it now, it looks like it was made in the seventies because yeah, your eyes really have adapted does. to the digital platform. Yeah. yeah, there are some. There is there is something really special about thirty five millimeter, though. There is something really special absolutely. about that flicker in that celluloid. I absolutely love it. And I got to tell you, certain films do hold up. Like the, for some reason, the original Top Gun. The way Tony Scott shot that, it still looks vintage, bro. But it looks, looks so. I love, I love you, but that movie looks, looks vintage so as good, fuck. Dude. It's a great movie, but it looks like it's 40, 50 years old, which it is. Not forty, fifty years old. Uh, in eight years, nineteen eighty is fifty years. Wow. So it's about forty. What? It's forty plus years. Nineteen eighty is fifty years. Oh. In eight years, yeah. So wow, bro. Yeah, sorry guys. What the hell? Yeah. Andy, can you go well, home? Well, because I'm just thinking about in the go home, man. In the, in the late <laughs> the 90s, I was thinking of the 70s as like this. Oh, ancient. Ancient. 20 years. I know. We're, We're 22 years from Y2. We're 23 years from Y2K. Yeah, buddy. Weird. Yeah, man. Getting really weird. Yeah, remember that when everyone thought everything was going to shut down? I can't even believe I'm still here. What? I could never see myself past 40. Oh, God. I could never see it. Dude, I got. I, I would try. I, I see myself to 104. I would be like, what am I doing? Here's the deal. I see myself to 104, blank. but I still look 40. I think hopefully that's what I'm going to be going for. You know, you know the technology is out there, right? Yeah, is it? One hundred percent. They can get rats to live four to five times past their life expectancy. Were you? So they and they figured out the crux now to aging. They actually have it. They know what it is, and they figure it out through fruit, fruit flies because they have such a short lifespan, right? And they replicate quickly, right? And they found they found that in the mitochondria of the cell, there's a small mm. particle that is like the little trash keeper, yeah, and goes around and gets all the stuff off of the cell and the mitochondria wall that slowly breaks down the cell. Right. It's when that little particle mm. starts to break down and they fixed it. They know how to fix the little particle. They've okay. got fruit flies who should be dead in a week who are living six, seven, eight months. And it's because they're Seriously? giving- they're, Yes, they're giving them supplements that fix the little trash guy so in the we, mitochondria of the cell. So why aren't, why aren't we doing that? They're, they're doing it with select individuals. Dwayne oh. The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Um, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and uh, and uh, uh, Snoop Dogg. No, but see, those these guys. The, those no, are the three. But I'll tell you what. And openly, these guys are using supplements. What are they? That affect the speed at which these particles do break down. And this is in hormone therapies, GH therapies, all these different therapies that are coming out. Basically, what they do is is they bolster up the the cell wall or let your body bolster up the cell wall so that even though these little particles are still breaking down, the cells are taking a little bit longer to actually disintegrate. Gotcha. Okay. So it's slowing it just a little bit, but really these are all band-aids to a problem that we know how to solve. It's just, wow. how long is this gonna take to clear FDAs and things like that? It'll definitely be available in Europe before it ever is here. But again, European vacation, whole, anyone? European vacation, anyone? There's that whole thing now where until- Jumping last, over to London like, to live forever. Until the oh, last like what? five six years, yeah, the the most of science has gone. We're in a population overload. We're ruining the planet because we got too many people. And only in the last five or six years has the data really swung and is showing now that actually we've already crested with our population. Even though the population will still rise, we've crested, and now it's going to plummet. It's going to fall off a cliff. And so now you hear about China reversing their ban on having only one child. Right. You, right. you hear in Japan, they're paying people to have more kids, and that's because they know. Please have sex with her. And Please is, have sex with her. These are facts. Here's these 20 are, bucks. These are facts. These are know. real facts. By 2050, we're going to be in a serious population really? issue. 
But it's wow. so funny that we're 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 yep. vo void of people, but the byproducts one individual creates is sinking the whole ship. Well, that's because we're all living, and I'm guilty of it as well. We're all living not sustainably, and wow. really, that's the solve. No government's going to handle this. That's one hell of a conflict. Nobody's going to be able to solve this. Wow, that right. is one hell of a conflict. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we need more and people. A, and a but they can't produce anything. It's yep. Like, well, well, well no. no, we just have to. Okay. Do things in a in a sustainable way. We have to give, and what that's going to take is some some technical ingenuity to come along and go. How do we give people products so that people don't have to change their behavior so drastically? Because it's hard. Behavioral modification is hard. Period for yeah. any human being. Yeah. So how do we give them products that that are sustainable but can be used in the same manner so that people don't I... have to change their behavior so drastically? That's what's got to happen. Yeah, I. Wow. But that's going to be on the private sector. That's I'm telling you. Well, man, the governments are not going to be able to do this. This is, this is up to us. This yeah. is up to people. This is this is not this this is one issue where, you know, this is, it's really hard for governments cuz they're fighting for other things and you know, it's like Yeah. The whole, the whole thing's a mess. We're all in conflict. The whole thing is a conflict. Honestly, I feel like life is a is a series of conflicts, whether it's with someone else, between two people, between yourself and yourself, you know what I mean? This part of the journey is you know, just a lot of conflict and, 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 you know, you trying to figure out what it all means and sort of how to navigate through all that. That's not easy to do, you know? Well, and, you know, I think a lot of people lately have gotten caught up in Listen to all this conflict in conflict for conflict's sake. All I do is you know what solve I'm saying? conflict between you two. You know guys. what I mean though? Like, I feel like conflict has become this thing where people have gotten so shut off yeah that they're like no no and they just shut down and go off into their own corner and go, yep. this is it i don't well, know they, what they prefer happened. to what? stay in the conflict than rather than reaching a conclusion or, or a resolve resolution. which i don't so, understand like so I, it boggles to I gotta get mind. that shit off my plate yeah i, I just want to i mean i don't i, I guess, hate it me too I yeah it. terrible it like conflict. eats me up yeah i, I actually terrible. i want to resolve it i want to be in, be to in the on. resolve i don't like staying in the conflict me either that i agree with that no, i no, i gotta, hate it i hate it some people though man they love it no they, they it's just they one just dramatic event to another actually they need it somehow flourish in an environment they need it of chaos and lip balm i have my own okay Eos, it's an amazing lip balm. No, I like love it. Burt's beeswax for me. Or Burt's. Actually, lovers, chime in on that. Are you an Eos person or are you a Burt's beeswax person? You know why I love Burt's? Well, one, it's natural and it's not got all this stuff in it because it's okay. just beeswax and some peppermint and things. But this peppermint one in particular, mm. when you put it on, if you have to go and close talk to somebody, I've always gotten, wow. Your breath smells so fresh. So it's even better than a mint. Mine has eucalyptus in it. Well, that works too. And it's a, uh, it's called the fixer. Well, my lips mm. are naturally lubricated, so. I just go like hey, this you know what mine. I picked up in Australia last time I was oh, there? Weird. Some Paw Paw. Brought it home with that? you? Yes. Red tube? Yeah. One of the best lip balms ever. Ever, yeah. I thought Paw he was going to say good. something else. No, wait. Picked no, wait. something get else this. up in Australia. Do you, know that, do, you know what, do you know where they get Paw Paw I got that from? ointment, though. It took yeah. care of it in a couple weeks. Do you know where they Simple get Paw antibiotic Paw? treatment cleared it all this. up. Do you know where Paw Paw comes from? I actually decided when I went, I was like, where do they, where do they get this Paw Paw? stuff The old from? Jungle Book stuff. You know, when he was like, oh, but no, but bare necessities, all oh, Paw Paw. I think he says that in that song. I think he does, but that's not Yes, what he does. Blue says that I in said, the song. I think you're right, but that's not what this is. Okay, what is it? Where does it come from? I don't know. I didn't know this. A freaking papaya. Paw Paw. Okay. Yeah, how's it spelled? I'm not really seeing the... Is it P A P A? What's the obvious Papa? connection there? Papaya. No, but what? How's Paw Paw spelled? P A W P A W. Paw Paw. It doesn't sound. Why like isn't it? Why like isn't it P A Y P A Y? Like Pi Pi. It would have been way better. Pi Pi. Pay 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 Pay. It would have been so much better. Pay Pay. Yes. I don't know why they called it papaya. I actually like papayas. Put a little lime on papaya. You're growing them. I think I'm actually a couple of like ten foot. Really? This thing in your greenhouse? No, in the yard. Think I'm actually losing. Brain cells listening to you guys talk about Paul Paul right now. No, it's the weed. How do we how do we get on the Paul Paul thing? Oh, I was talking about my Who knows? Uh, lip oh. bomb. Yeah. Oh, your lip bomb. My lip bomb. Yeah. You guys are well, really cruising. What are you doing? Checking my we're, email. We're we're driving the ship over here and you're, you know, posting. No, I was checking my email. Oh, well, okay. What is it? One? No, it's seven fifteen thousand emails. Fifteen thousand see that's I, another thing. 
I'm very conflicted. Like when I see my 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 phone board like lit up with uh, hundred. I don't know how people live. Look, you look at someone and they're like fourteen thousand six hundred okay. nine emails. Okay, okay, dude, dude, seriously, dude, I, I couldn't have that, dude. Well, if I have more than like twenty, go, got a lot of friends. Twenty, I'm like, the I got a, oh, a lot of friends. A lot of fires, yeah. a lot of irons, and a lot of fires. No, Let no, me tell no, you, no. fifteen thousand. Not even Musk or guys like that have that. They don't oh, allow God. it to get like that. No. Here we go again. Oh. They don't allow it to get like. Here we that. go. Oh my gosh. Musk. Musk. No, you know who does? Not me, even though? Musk has fourteen thousand emails. Nobody is pointing any any missiles at this guy. Musk. Ooh. Gates. Oh, Gates. Do you know? Not only does he now own the majority of the farmland, yeah, he also Dude, owns the seed this. banks. A couple weeks ago, seed banks. he bought that, our food supply. Great, and the bushes, how do you control people? Whatever their food. The bushes own ninety percent of all of our natural water. Food right. and water. You own that. You own the world. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Bush family. Ninety percent. It's called a monopoly. How's that legal? I don't know. So we got to worry about Gates and Bush. All right, Bushy Gates. Bushy. <laughs> that musky Bushy Gates. Or we just call it Bush Gate. <laughs> Bushgate, I Bushgate like twenty three, Bushgate. We're gonna. Yeah. We've already franchised that one and trademarked it. I'm sorry, you you can't have it. But Bush, there's a movie coming out about it. Bushgate, <laughs> Bushgate. Oh God! Hey, there's no water and there's no land. Partially Bushgate. based on actual events. Yes, partially based on <laughs> on somewhat actual events that we think are true, but yeah. we can't verify. Well. Guys, as we were talking about, that's about as we were talking about what they make lip balm out of. No, as we were talking about. That's conflict right there. I mean, think about it. The whole world is about positioning and conflict. I mean, that's, you know, war, conflict. Everything's conflict. You know what I mean? Ah, I, don't, I think the only way to navigate... Joe, do you ever notice Joe has a habit of resting his hands on you? Yeah. Like, he just well, puts Andy, his hand on me and, Andy, like, he just sits there. Andy, well, you know, somebody. and maybe it's a nervous habit. Andy. Maybe you should allow your brother to put his hand on like your shoulder yeah. to calm Yeah, I don't like being touched. Yeah, oh, shit. You've been you've been you've been, you've been groping hands. me. You've been groping me since you were a little child. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah, just let it go. Like, ooh, look at this. Oh, I'm gonna give you a little massages. No, I don't like massages. Anyway, can I get back to the point? Oh, yeah. Jesus! All right, please, please. So, get to I it. think the most important thing is there a point? out of conflict. Yeah, I'm taking Andy's mic away from him. He doesn't need to speak anymore. Do you Matt fidgets a lot when he talks? I do. Is he's that like, a problem for you? Oh, conflict. <laughs> it's like, what are you? Hey, bu he's building a. <laughs> if you listen, he makes patterns when he talks. Listen to this one. Maybe it's Morse code. Maybe I'm saying, help me, <laughs> get me out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Um, I think the one thing that might be key when it comes to conflict, because this is what I had to learn when it comes to conflict, you have to not worry. If you remain in control, you have to not care so much what people think about you. And I, and I, honestly, I really don't. You have I really to get don't. over that. I, I know a lot of people don't like me. And it's Otherwise, okay. you'll blow up and you'll accentuate the conflict. If you're okay, also being right, but not having to state it. Right. It's another big one. Yeah. If you go, you know what? I think I'm right on this, but I'm not going to cause an argument. Yeah. I'm just going to go. This is what I think. And, I feel like you listening, know. you know, is a really great tool. Listening. You know? Most people yeah. wait for you to stop talking so that they can talk. Uh, that's a big one. And I'll tell you, it's so funny because we grew up, we grew up in a family where <laughs> we just talk all over each other. You yeah, know what I mean? You interrupt each other in three seconds. Yeah. Like, Let me tell you, <laughs> the secret is letting someone else get a word but out. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to build off of what he says. Yes. I'm not waiting for him to finish so I can get my two cents. I'm trying to further the discussion. I'm not trying to further my own discussion or my own intentions. But it is your own intentions. And I know what he's going to say, and I certainly know what you're going to say because yep. we're brothers. That's right, brothers, brothers. <laughs> Brothers. Remember that guy that pitches that show once and he goes, he goes, he goes, here's the deal. It's all about the brothers. The funny thing I was like, I was like, no, 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 no it's that. not. First of all, I would never, you, you're you not coming into a room with us because you're, no, uh-uh. We can pitch it. We just start with the brothers. Let me give you a little backstory to this. Not too much. That's right. Not too much. Okay. But this was a story about nature. This was a nature This was a story all about how our lives got turned upside down. It's a down. nature doc. And I thought, well, maybe to push it over the edge to get it sold, that would allow Andy and Joe to come on and we'd wow. all kind of narrate this little animal you show. That for you, Matt. It all of a sudden turned into a Lawrence Brothers <laughs> show. And needless to say, we didn't sell it because we were pitching to animal networks. Yeah. So it's a little bit odd. Yeah. Well, he ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. He sold us a bill of goods and he was, <laughs> he had no goods and there were no bills. No, <laughs> no there were Actually, just bills. Actually, we got a bill. No, yeah. Just yeah. bills. Just lots, bills from us no having to film that And shit. lots of bills. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh my God. That's but see, so funny. That's one of those situations where we were been a little bit less worried about the conflict and more worried about him not 
whether he liked us or not, right. just being concerned about actually making what we wanted to make. Right, that's right. We would have come out on the other side of that, making a nature doc versus coming on the other side of burning a bridge. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I think we still cross that bridge. I mean, I think the bridge is still there. It's just, you know, they just don't. Well, I meant with we'd the have to show, just sneak over. Show. We have to sneak over now. That's hey, we're Ray. here. God damn it. These large brothers are back. Did, Ray. Yeah, I, I know what you did. Oh, my God. I blew that bridge in Bogota. <laughs> the bridge in Bogota, Ray. Did you ever see a movie called The Specialist? Yes, of course. Stallone. So Stallone and yes. Stone. Yeah. And James Woods. Oh, yeah. And there is some epic dialogue in that. Yeah. Uh, Annie and I often laugh all the time because the <laughs> I know what you did, Ray. You killed. You killed at the bridge at Bogota. Wait, you blew up that price. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that to somebody? Like, even if it's true. Uh, anyway, but he's raging. Ray. He's you raging. You blew up that bridge yeah. in Bogota. You blew up the bridge in Bogota. Like, like that. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, no. or whatever. And it was so funny because he was, he was, he was like raging. James Woods was raging. He his always eyes raging. Were he always yeah. Rages. Right, 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 right. I did a movie with James That's Woods. That's what you want. That's what you want. Okay. I did a movie with James Woods. I know. Yeah, he was the villain in that animated. Recess movie. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. James Woods. That's funny. All right. Mm. That's crazy. Well, but they were hiring him for kid stuff back then. Yeah. Remember, 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 when we, remember when we were walking down the street? We, Ann and I were walking, and there was this guy who was, who was rumbling toward us, and he had this loud Hawaiian shirt on, and he's got this, you know, the, the hair is all slick, slick back, and he's like, and I'll tell you what I want to do. And I'll tell you what I want to do. And Andy looks at me, and he goes, look at this guy. He thinks he's James Woods. And he looks up and he literally, he, as he goes in the store, he goes, Bleh. and it was James Woods. Yeah, it really was James Woods. It was, it wild. was freaking James. I think and he, we went, he oh, heard, I think he heard James me Woods. say, yes. and like, oh my God, look at this guy. He thinks he's James Woods. So he looked up from the phone. Yeah. Bleh. yeah. And it and was he's James ranting. Woods. He was ranting. Yeah. He was blowing somebody out <laughs> yeah, on the phone. Ripping him. Yeah. Ripping him. Uh, I'll tell you how fuck I love. Yeah. Blah, fuck. And he yeah. goes in the store and we're like, oh my God, <laughs> it was James Woods. Yeah. It, it was. was unbelievable. But we said it really loud. We were on the street. Everybody started looking like, oh, it was James Woods. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> James Woods. Ah, James it's James Woods. Woods. Yeah, James <laughs> Woods. James Woods. James Woods. James Woods. <laughs> He's so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you want. That's what you want. I'll tell anyway. you what, though. He did play a terrible sleaze bag in Casino. Oh, dude. Everybody in that movie was so damn James good. Woods is a really good actor. Dude. You know well, why you know ball thing You know who really I loved? Well. You know who I loved in, in I mean the hard way he was awesome. Oh, I love the hard way. By the way, if you have not seen the hard way, uh lovers, go check out the hard way. Michael J. Fox, James um, Woods. J. Fox. Fabulous movie. So just to re just to recap, Monsters, Hard Way. Yep. Yep. Taxi. Yep. Exactly right. Taxi. Welcome back, Cotter. Oh my God. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Catter. I mean, I can't even believe it. I you mean, it's what? like unbelievable. I mean, Mr. Catter. Oh, I mean, it's like so weird. I don't know if anybody even that's, knows. That's John Travolta. I know. Vinny, Vinny Barbarino. And the only reason I know that is because my character, Joey Russo, was sort of modeled after that. Yes. And I got a lot of comparisons to that character. Um, you know, and then when they were, remember Tarantino, it was his favorite show. Mm. He was going to make Welcome Back Cotter the movie. And I'll never forget there was an Entertainment Weekly article or somewhere where they asked him who he wanted to play Vinny Barbarito, and he said he wanted me to play it. Amazing. And then they never made the movie. Dang yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. <gasps> I mean, you know, it was so weird. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, wait, anybody notice have. my T-shirt? Just want to throw it out there. This is a vintage Philadelphia Zoo. All Philly in the Zoo's house. Philly in the house. How cool is that? Yeah. I've had it for 38 years. Hey, Matt. Years. Wow, it's so cool. Your dude. balls are showing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, they're my balls. Oh, my God, Andy. Dude, I, I love that T-shirt, dude. I, I, I so want to steal that T-shirt. Spent many afternoons here. Did you check many, out my many Charred many City hat? You like my Charred City I do hat? like your Charred City You guys going to wear these if I give I'll them to you? I'll wear it, yeah. All right. All right. But, like, proudly? Yeah. Not like you lost a bet? Okay, cool. So, we are bringing in somebody today. This is hey! the favorite part of the show. I right. always like to do reach out to people, Hi. see what they're going through, their their uh, stories and uh, their trials and tribulations. We got um, we got uh, Miranda, who is now joining us. Miranda, welcome to the Brotherly Love Podcast. Hi, Hi guys, how are you? Good, we're Good. doing all right. How, how you doing? Yourself? Good. Yeah. Where Good. are you calling us from? I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Nice. Phoenix. Are you a Suns fan? I'm not really a sports fan. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no thank you. No problem. Good to hear. <laughs> what are your favorite things, hobbies? Like, what do you like to do? It's kind of silly, but I, I mean, I, I'm a mom of four, so that's kind of... Keeps you that's busy. your hobby. Right? Keeps that's you busy. It, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> wow, you have four children? I, yeah, I'm a mom. You seem so young. Yeah, you have four, four children? Oh, my goodness. 
I have four boys. Oh, <laughs> how old? Seven, uh, five, three, and one. Wow. Oh. They like, like a little pack of wolves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, yeah. I remember when my girls were young, I only had two. Uh, of course, I have another one on the way now, but, but uh, you know, it's uh, wow. I mean, it's wild when you have young children. You really don't have a life. Like, I missed out on entertainment for like five years. Like, I, I was like, you know what? I didn't see that movie. Why didn't I see that movie? Oh, I know. Because my I, girls were three and a half and one. I, you know what I mean? Or four and two. It's like, yeah. I know what now. Why. But four boys, seven and under. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work, huh? You are a hero. You are a hero. Mm -hmm. That is quite a (laughs) amazing responsibility, and uh, that's awesome. Wow. Awesome. Good on you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, sort of nervous, but I'm okay, I think. (laughs) Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous at all. We're nervous, too. (laughs) Don't be nervous. We're just going to take your social security number and bank records, and we're just going (laughs) to, you know, sift through them. You know, the IRS has 47,000 new agents now. Well, we're three of them. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Uh, No. We work out these little little fake batches. IRS, see it? Right there, black and white. (laughs) (laughs) I know. The worst. Yeah. Um, no, uh, what, why, why are you, why are you nervous? So I'm 34. So I grew up in, in the nineties and there, so there's that. Yeah. Did you ever see anything you uh, did? So I, a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. As long as there's a, there's a little bit, as long as you've watched a little bit, you can stay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, probably all of it. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Oh, yeah. Add five minutes, would you? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen. We know that you have a sort of an interesting story or anecdote you want to yeah. share with us today. This is our favorite part of the show that we've been doing. Yeah, so we're excited so to hear share it. with us kind of what, what you're going through or your little family dynamic or, you know, slice yeah. of your family dynamic that, you, that, that you'd like to share with us t- today because we, we look forward to hearing that. So I'm the oldest of, of five hmm. kids. My parents got divorced about 20 years ago, I guess, but mm-hmm. it's just it's caused a lot of issues between my brother and my sister. Mm. I mean, just everybody. It's just trickled down and just most of my family hasn't, other than me, hasn't talked in over five years now. Wow. So, so wow. that makes it hard. Like even yeah. do, do the, so the siblings don't, don't talk either. Right. What about your parents? Yeah. Do they, do, do, do the siblings individually talk to the parents or no? Individually? Yes. Uh, my, my sister and my dad talk, my <clears throat> brother and my mom talk but they don't talk to each other so wow. <laughs> and my brother and my sister don't talk so and i'm stuck right in the middle of all that basically so yeah Jeez. it was there a lot of uh animus between your parents like when the divorce happened was it kind yeah. of a rough divorce yeah yeah okay. and i, I um, there was for cheating you. there was cheating and that kind of stuff so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I got a question for you because this is something that mm-hmm. we went through. Um, and I know that it's talked about a lot when there's kids involved in a divorce and, you know, the kids always feel like it's somehow their fault yeah. or, you know, something went on. Or what I find again is that the parents, because they're so caught in this toxic situ- situation that they forget and they kind of, this bleeds out onto the kids and they kind of actually put this stuff onto the children. Yep. And then, if you know one's more angry at the other, then they'll start to use the kids. And I don't blame the parents. I understand because I've seen it with good people. Where? What do you mean? It's. I mean, yeah. I've seen it in our own family yeah. where where you know yeah. you yeah. you lose sight of the fact because you're so angry that this didn't that this blew up right. it didn't work that something happened that you lose sight of the fact that the kids are the most important thing at the end of the day, and yeah. you're feeding all this toxic stuff to them. That conflict shouldn't really be between your kids it's or or your kids should not be a part of the parents conflict unfortunately be responsible for any of the burden of it yeah, either. exactly the problem is we've been talking about conflict this whole this whole episode you know uh today and and that is that that's unfair you know and and honestly we were we were part of that i mean we experienced that believe it or not andy was about 14 when our parents right you were about 14, okay. 14, 13 when our 14. parents got divorced yeah 14. so Look, it's brutal at any age. Unfortunately, you know, when my children were, let's see, they were, uh, you know, um, 13, almost 13 and 10, you know? So it's just tough, man. It's really tough. And, you know, you try it's, it's never to do easy your best. It's just never at any, easy. At any age. It's never anybody. easy. For the parents, for the kids. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a tough situation. You, you, no hopefully, though, the parents just try to take as much of that conflict burden off of the children. But it's so it difficult to do. No, it, just, it doesn't happen most, no. most of the time. Yeah. It's rare well, just, when parents can hate each other. 
but can put all that aside and put the kids first. Yeah. It's almost impossible. As you know, whether you have a really great relationship, with, hopefully with your parents or whether you don't, there's there's a moment in, in everybody's life where you come to a point where you realize either your parents or the people you've looked up to or your mentors, they're just people, right? They're trying Lord. to navigate it the same right. way you are. And maybe they're a little bit ahead and maybe you're catching up or whatever. So you got to take a step back and understand that everybody's just you know trying to figure it out and navigate it the best they can. However, there is no excuse for parents to maintain no. a proper example and try to, you know, no. at least uh, help see their the children through that experience, um, the you know, with, with the softest, most gentle touch as possible. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. The, and the problem is the kids then pick up on that conflict, right? And then the kids project because right. they know, at least instinctually, that they can direct some of, at their parents, but they don't know how much they can get away with. So then it starts internally turning on them and they take it out on each other. You know, and all that conflict just continues to breed more conflict because conflict doesn't solve anything. It just creates more conflict, you know, and um, yeah. no one's there to bring the temperature down in the room. And it creates a lot of fissures and divides, even amongst family that should love each other no matter what, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a shame because at the end definitely... of the day, you're just losing time. You're losing yeah. time. Are you, Is the responsibility yeah. on you to kind of be the, the bridge of, of communication for everybody or, or do you try to take on that responsibility yourself? Um keep people in touch or to kind of you know how does that work um i've tried i've tried for a long time to be neutral and to help and to facilitate and to but i ended up going uh going to therapy um and just figuring out that it's not my job yeah. good for you to do that yeah you yeah. know it's up to everybody else that i can only do what i can do <laughs> really yeah. you know i'm really glad you, you, did you that. absolutely can you know what you you did need to, to, to get another opinion on it and I'm, I'm glad that's what they told you because i know i know it feels like man i've been there where you just you love this person so much and you want to grab them and you want to shake them and you just want to be like can't you see this is we're losing we're yeah. losing this and but you, you it, right that doesn't have the reaction that you think you're going to get you think you're going to get the tears and you're right and it just doesn't work that way if people no. don't want to be saved or if they don't want to save a relationship, there's really nothing you can do except doing what you're doing. What's terrible is sometimes you try to help and then you get roped into it. Yeah. And then they rope yeah. you in even f further. That's true. And their drama becomes your drama and their conflict becomes your yeah. conflict. And all you share with them is conflict. And they dump all this on you and you can't handle it. You have your own life. Like you have your own children. You have your own thing to do. Right. You know, and you're trying to, to solve things and you can't solve it. You know, and you feel like, there's games being played and emotional games. And yeah. at the end of the day, I'll tell you, one of the things that my therapist said to me is just some sometimes you have to go, I'm just not doing it. We're not going to do this yeah. right now. I'm just not going to do it right yeah. now. You know? And it's weird. It sounds cold and callous because I want to fix things too, right? I just want to be a fixer. Yeah. That's yeah. what I do my whole life. I try to like solve <laughs> things and fix things. And I take on such a burden to do that so many times with so many different relationships and the complexities of, you know, with my kids and you know, the divorce that happened and, you know, with my family and my nuclear family. And I mean, you just can't make everybody happy. You can't do it. It's impossible. No, and you especially can't make people happy or even try to. Be they don't want to be that. If you don't start here. Yeah. I mean, if they don't want to try to make themselves happy, you know, it's not, it's not going to work. It's just not going to yeah. work. And it was seeping into my marriage and my family. Yeah. Too, and it will. So. And it will. That's right. Yeah. And that's got to become your yeah. priority now. So, well, yeah, you've navigated, it seems like to the the right spot where you you know you set up some boundaries and you take care of yourself and your core unit and establish the type of right. relationship and the type of family you want there and hopefully maybe the outsiders can see you know yeah. see through all the greatness that you're experiencing and the and the, the time shared with your family maybe they'll maybe they'll come around and if not it's their loss you know unfortunately yeah yeah it sure. just just it just disturbs your peace and it it, and i should have gone to therapy a long time ago um but it just was consuming. It was, you know, I'm having babies and feeling all the things and having trouble. And it's just, it was just too much. Too much. So yep. Too much. Yeah. <clears throat> no, you got to yeah. insulate yourself from as much conflict as possible, you know? Yeah. Because in, in normal right. marriages with normal kids, you have a lot of conflict. So you have to just yeah. try to at least protect that <laughs> yep. from right. any more conflict that isn't actually directly affecting you. You know what I mean? Un unless you let yeah. it affect you and then it starts to directly affect yeah. you, you know? It it was and it was just especially after my um my fourth baby um the the postpartum and the mm. and the just 
everything was just like, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yep. You know, I've got to figure something yep, else yeah. out, you know, because, yep. because my parents still don't get along. They're, they're remarried and they still don't get along. Oh, so Isn't my par- my dad has. So ridiculous. Yeah. It's so. My dad has other children. So it's actually kind of funny. My dad has a daughter that is younger than my youngest son now. So it's kind of strange. So Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. there it is. There you know. it is. Well, look. You know, I think that you're getting you you you've gotten yourself in a position where you have someone to talk to in a forum where you can get clear headed and then come back yeah. to your marriage clear. You don't have to burden your husband with that. You yeah. have somebody to talk Good to. Good on you for having yeah. the courage to do you that. You know, because it's of very people, tough. It's very important. It's extremely yeah. important. Yeah. Let me let me tell you something. It took me years to just realize, like, you know what? I need somebody outside of my brothers, outside right. of my mother, outside. You know, I need mm-hmm. somebody like somebody that I can just. Talk had to. that special space with it, yeah. it's unique i share everything with these guys but it, that's a unique place Yeah, sometimes you need an outsider's perspective that isn't so attached to everything yeah just give you some words of wisdom without having the fear it, of anything else and i still do it and once a week and it helps me mm-hmm. exponentially i'm a big fan of it so, can, so kudos to you for doing that for yourself i love that you checked in with us today i'm it's so cool that you have four kids that's so neat and i'm glad that that at least now you're protecting your marriage because ultimately that's going to be the best thing for you and your heart and your children. You know, that's yeah. going to be the best thing. So yeah, so anyway. start start it new with this with your yeah. core family. Yeah. Eliminate all those things yeah. going forward so that your kids grow rid up rid, that. rid yourself of the conflict yeah. and the dysfunction yep. and try to just right. establish your, your kids pass on to the next generation this new right this good life values. that you're building. Yeah. You know, yep, that's yeah. what you can do. Yep, sure. that's exactly right, Miranda. You are awesome. Listen. We vow that we are going to hopefully be on long enough doing this thing. We'll be blessed enough to do this where we can check back in with everybody. So we're going to be checking back yeah. in with you at some point at a later date. And sure. we want to get up updates, all right, about how the kids are growing up. And, you know, I don't yeah. know when that'll be, but it'll be at some point. All right, for sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate right, you it. You bet. Yeah. All right. Bye. We'll Good see you later, you. Miranda. Right, bye, Thanks guys. so much. All right. Bye. 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 How about that? Huh? Mm-hmm. Four uh, kids. Well, it's just seven. a shame. Honestly, I hate hearing things where people Dude, are fractured. Yeah, not it's talking just, it's just, man, I tell you, life is time too damn is short, man. Than anything. Too damn short. Money, dude. nothing. You can't, you can get money, you can lose money and get money, but you can never get your time back. Like, Once it's, it's just, gone, it's gone. it is a colossal waste of precious time. It really is. Uh, and honestly, man, I experience things, as you guys know, in and out, you know, daily. And I just, I just like, why? I don't know. Why? Why are we making a problem out of this? There actually isn't a problem. Yeah. Like, you want problems? You want to see real people that have, like, real issues? There are millions and millions of them, yeah. you know? And we have our fair share of them, just but this is not one of them. Take a look around. Yeah, I know. But this is not one of them, you know? And we're being foolish, and we're being stupid, and, yeah. you know, it's just, I just can't stand it. So, anyway. Well, but, guys, you know what? There's always going to be conflict. As long as I got you two guys, I know I got a place to rest my head. A shoulder to cry on. A shoulder to touch throughout all Why podcasts. All right. Man? All right. I love you guys. We're out, all right? Bert's Beeswax or Eos? That's my question. Peace. Hey, guys, the Lawrence Brothers here to thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of the Brotherly Love Podcast. That's right. And to watch clips from this pod, go to the Podco YouTube channel at the link in the description. And for exclusive weekly bonus content, join our Patreon now. The link is also in the description. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Next week.